What did I just do? Okay, this is Tara and Jill and BJ. Hey. Um, we and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we are. I think we're live. We got a couple about one or two minutes here. BJ is helping us get our comments situated because we have a. You should see the conglomeration we have <laughs> set up here. This is crazy. We've got a computer on top of a computer on the side of a computer. <laughs> Lights With lights. <laughs> so I hope this um, looks okay. So if you can see us and if you can hear us, please <laughs> for a change. <laughs> please let us know. We think we've got the pixelation and the um, sound problems taken care of. Um, can't see your comments yet because that's what BJ is trying to get up for me here. So. Um, Today, Mom and I are talking about what to do when you ain't got no money. <laughs> oh, you're English there. Yes, I graduated high school. <laughs> I know how to speak properly. It's a joke. Um, but we're going to give it just another minute or so here. And um, this is Jill, if you're new. I'm Tara. We're Hi. mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. This is my son, BJ, who's tech support right now. Um, Watch on YouTube, right? Yes. <laughs> I think we are. Not showing up. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you going to tell them what we're doing okay. today? Um, so, we're trying to see if we're live on YouTube. We're streaming YouTube and Facebook together to see if we can get them going. And I'm stalling for just a minute here because you we're not sure we're on. Do I want you to sing? <laughs> well, I don't know if we should sing or not. Um, so one of our tips, I'll just give you a little preview, is use scratch paper instead of buying notepads. So like when you're doing a live YouTube event, <laughs> yes. that's what she's going to make notes on. <laughs> use scratch paper to make notes. <laughs> now the question is, I didn't test my pen. Okay, my pen's working. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we do practice what we preach around here. Um, all right, do we got it up, BJ? Yep. Okay, BJ's got the comments for me, and I just dropped my... Oh, boy. Sorry, guys. Here's Facebook. Here's YouTube. Facebook and YouTube. Okay. Let's see. Um, hold on just a second here. It looks like we're frozen on Facebook. I just paused it. So okay. Hi. Okay. Yes. Looks like we're getting people on here now. Um, I can see in here fine. Please, can you comment and let me know if everybody can hear and see me? Okay. BJ, Mr. Tech Support here is my oldest son, and I rely on them to make to me look out good. If it's uh, working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Not frozen on Facebook. No, we're good. Okay. Yay. The picture looks great. Working on YouTube. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Luella. Thank you, Mary Grace. And Barb in Vancouver. Okay. We're going to get started then. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, BJ. Yeah, we need more help. Okay. I will scream if I need more help. <laughs> so. Just to reintroduce here, I'm Tara, this is my mom, Jill, and um, just a little bit of background. Um, first, or actually, let me back up just a minute. We have joined the Homestead Network. So go to the homesteadnetwork.com and you will find all these cool YouTubers that you can watch. We don't have cable anymore, so my latest passion has been watching <laughs> And so has mom's, even though she has cable. But I just love watching all these YouTube videos. I could spend hours doing it. And I love watching my soaping videos and all that kind of thing. And so that's how we entertain ourselves. We, we use Netflix and we use YouTube. And so we thought, well, maybe people would find us entertaining. <laughs> Not sure why. <laughs> You know, we love to share tips and tricks to help people to get out of debt, to save money, homemade recipes, those kinds of things. We love sharing those kinds of things. So, um, 
we're going to be talking to you as we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we're going to be on um, 5 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. That may or may not change. We're not sure. Um, but at the moment, 5 p.m. Eastern. And then we're also on live around noon, Monday through Friday. Um, we're giving that a try to see how it goes. Mom is visiting from Kansas. So she's only going to be with us a couple more days live. Live. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then she may be live via Skype. So, um, good. Thank you, Polly. It looks a lot better. So we're going to be talking to you back and forth. Um, so please leave us your questions and your comments, and we will try to get as many of those answered as we can while we're going through the show. Okay, so, um, does that take care of all the preliminaries? I think, so. I think that takes care of all the you preliminaries. You might have to know where we're getting the ideas. Oh, yes. So, they... today we are doing these ideas out of, oops, the sun is reflecting. There. Penny Pension Mama, 500 ways I lived on $500 a month. This is mom's story about, not mom's story, this is her tips. Her story is like a 10 volume novel. I mean, <laughs> her story, we need to do her story and that would be content until we're dead. Encyclopedia <laughs> size. But, um, but this is the tips that she used to live on an extreme low income. Even in the 80s, $500 a month was nothing. And she raised two teenagers. My dad left us. And she paid off $35,000 of debt in five years on a $1,000 a month income. Then we became ill with chronic fatigue syndrome. And we all came down with the flu day one day. Never got better. Still sick. Um, you should have seen me last night when I was laying, dying on the couch after we had a big birthday bash for our boys. And so we're still sick 28 years later. And um, this is how she raised two teenagers on $500 a month. She stayed debt free. Her house was paid off. Um, while she was working, she paid off all of our house. My dad had a whole bunch of debts that he left us with, but because mom's name was on the credit card, she got stuck with them. And so she paid it all off and then we became ill and it was a good thing I paid them all off at that time because then we became ill just about the same year that I paid everything off mm -hmm. because when we became ill I couldn't work anymore so I sold my business for eight thousand dollars we, we lived mom and dad made homemade mom and dad made Nickelodeon player piano, piano parts, parts at our house <laughs> We had, we, pianos. Had yeah. we had a manufacturing yeah. facility in our, in our upstairs in our basement, and we had like eight pianos at any given time around our house that mom and dad made parts for. Yeah, and so I sold that for $8,000 because I was too sick to sell it properly and get the right amount of money from it, and we lived off of that $8,000 for three years. Not $8,000 a year, but $8,000 for that three years, but... So we're talking just a little bit over $2,000, like $2,500. We lived on $2,500 for three years. three years. Now, the thing was, if I hadn't had my house paid off, if I hadn't had all the credit card debt gone, we would never have done, been able to do that. But because I would gotten that taken care of, I was prepared for that next emergency or crisis that came. And so that's why we push so much. Get your credit card yeah. debt paid off and your home paid off and those things you know, as soon that's the criteria for everything we do. Well, and people are always telling us, oh, well, that's never going to happen to me. Whatever. I don't believe it. It's something is always going to happen. Every family will have a crisis have of some sort yeah. eventually. And if you don't have the debt hanging over your head, then you can handle those crises better mm -hmm. when you don't have the stress of trying to figure out how you pay it. And I will go so far as to say, I know a lot of people are already in this situation. I'm not criticizing you. But if your kids are getting ready to get into this situation, like our kids are teenagers now, student loans, they're in, they're... don't do it. If you already have them, get them paid off. But if you have kids going into college, they need to be paying cash. And if they can't be paying cash, they need to be doing something else where they can pay cash. I'm... I'm meaning even if it takes five or ten years to get your degree, do it instead of going into debt. I have friends oh, and so neighbors. People. I we can have readers, readers all the time. constantly. 
that they have kids and they want to stay home, but they can't because they have their student loan. Husband loses their job. They can't. But you know, another so, thing, they get the education part of it so they can have a good paying job and live a comfortable life. That's part of the reason we want our kids to get a good education and that mm -hmm. type of thing. But what happens, it's totally backfiring because they have so much stress from the debt, from the college, you know, debt and everything that they can't live a comfortable, nice life. They may be having this money coming in with that education, but they're miserable because they're mm -hmm. so stressed out with yep. the debt. And so it just, it just backfires, yeah. the whole plan. So. And we understand, like Sally said, um, it's too late. I've already got 37000 I understand that. But the thing is, is now get it paid off that Just doesn't mean do, you can't pay it off yeah now. do whatever you can to pay it off and i mean whatever you can and part of what we're talking about today will explain how to do yes that. so we're going to give you tips on what to do when you ain't got no money because i didn't go to college okay but I'm you know joking, 37 but i had thirty-five thousand, and i did it in five years it, on a thousand dollars a month she only earned $1,000 a month, and she paid off $35,000 of debt in five years. Which so. means I only took about $300 that we lived on a month, and the rest went to my credit card debt. Yeah. That was just what I made up my mind to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, So you can do it. You know, Just don't say, well, it's just hopeless, and I can't. Yeah. But and it's going to take work. It's going to take time, and it's going to take sacrifice. Yeah. And New Harmony on YouTube just said, uh, New Harmony 85, I think she just said, or he said, sorry, I don't know um, which, but, um, you know, they said, that's insane. I can't even pay half my taxes on $2,500. Well, that's part of the point. If you have to move, move. Mm -hmm. Mom, when she did this, she specifically stayed in Kansas because our house payment, mom and dad bought a rundown house. I mean, rundown house. We're talking spooky creepy haunted house type house <laughs> and she was doing dishes in the bathtub while they were remodeling with two little kids under two and she was she had some medical problems after my brother was born and the thing is is later then she stayed in that house that was partially remodeled it wasn't all the way remodeled because the house payment was only a hundred dollars a month um and so you may have to move. That's you may, part of the sacrifice yeah. I was talking about. You, you may have to you sell know. your cars. You may have to get a used car. Uh, Michael and I, we currently only have debt on our house, but we have six vehicles and almost uh, one of them, our minivan. We did pay, um, I can't remember, six or seven thousand dollars for used. Every other car has been less than twenty five hundred dollars. They're still going strong. You know, we don't put all of our money in our cars. So today, we're going to talk about <laughs> oh, <laughs> your shopping list and what to do when you don't have the money to buy some of these things. Because really, if you cannot buy Q-tips, you should not be putting them on a credit card. If you cannot buy, um, you know, l lip balm and that kind of thing, don't put it on the credit card. And that's the kind of things we're going to be talking yeah. about. Yeah, and the thing is, some of these things are going to seem extreme. But if you've got to be, don't laugh, <laughs> I know they're extreme. But you've got to be really, really serious about this. You know, if, if you, I mean, you don't have to do it. But you've got, to, you've got to be serious, and that's why it seems I had to do extreme. I had $10 when my husband left, no job. I had no family, no friends, no church, nobody to go to to help. I wouldn't go on welfare, and I wouldn't go on welfare. It just, at the time, by the time I went on to welfare, I had to feed my kids that next week, and I had $10, mm -hmm. you know, and that's yeah. it. So I had to do extreme. You're going to say these things are extreme. Well, I was in extreme position at that point. Yeah. You have $10 and no job. You know, let's think about this. It's just, and no one, I had no food bank to go to, no mm -hmm. women's shelter, nothing, you know. Yeah, so. and Denise just said, she just taught this to her second graders. <laughs> Needs <laughs> versus want just a few days ago. And this is the point. Really, these are wants. Mm -hmm. These are not needs. Yeah. Needs. Let's get the definition here straight first. <laughs> needs are shelter, food, and clothing. That's it. Nothing. And we're and not even extreme in the foods. And not even extreme, extreme in, in the, the shelter. shelter. I mean, we're talking if you have to Minimum. get a really dinky house or apartment 
or if you have to share an apartment with five or six people, you know, you, if you have shelter over your head, if you have clothes on your body, even if it's one or two pairs of underwear, you can wash them out, you know. If you have to. Now, every night. So. before you all panic, remember, you're thinking, there's no way I can do this. There's no way. Remember one thing. You won't be doing this forever. You are just doing this to get out of debt. Once you're out of the debt and you have your finances under control, you can start buying more things. You can start doing more of the stuff that makes you comfortable. You know, I'm not doing a major part of this now because I'm to the point where I'm stable and I can get, get a little bit more and do a little bit more. So don't panic and think, there's no way I could live like this. Stop thinking of it as a forever thing. Now what you'll find out is after you've done this for a while, you're going to be so comfortable with some of these habits, you'll, you'll just keep doing it, and you probably won't get into debt again because you'll be comfortable with it. So, you know, don't think, it, I'm going to do this forever. The other thing is, all our tips are not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't immediately say, well, this will never, ever work for my family, or this won't work for me. Instead, of, we have that mindset. Anytime somebody gives us an idea, we automatically say, no, that won't work. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, that won't work, saying, how can I make this work? You know, mm -hmm. how can we do this? Is there some way I can do it a little bit differently to make it work? Yeah. And we may give you five tips and only one of them will work for your family. Well, that one tip might be enough is better than what you were before you started. So pick and choose what you can use for your family yeah. and then go on. And so. Deborah asked, what state did we live in when we did this? So mom... Um, raised David and I on $500 a month in Wichita, Kansas, and that was in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but Michael and I have lived in Idaho, Texas, Colorado, and Kansas, and we have also done all of these things. Um, State doesn't make a difference. I mean, well, if you're living in New York City, then you need to move. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, know? Really, that's it. If you're if you can't make it in the strict state, I moved from Kansas to Idaho. I'd never been to Idaho. I'd lived in Kansas a good portion of you know my life, but I moved because I thought it was going to be cheaper up there for me to live. But the thing is, a lot of times where you, what state you're in, like. They have higher income a lot of times. Most people, majority, not everybody, but a majority have a higher income here in Colorado. Some things are higher, other things aren't. And so you can't go on what state you're in because usually if you have higher prices, there's usually a higher income and it balances out. Yeah, so. it does. And um, let's see, who was it? Kelly said, go from victim to victor. Exactly. Exactly. That's what we're trying to teach. Stop being of the mindset that we just can't do it or there's no way out or everybody's doing it and that's the way everybody is, so I'm going to stay this way. Yeah. I can't stress enough the freedom from stress. Mm -hmm. yep. if, you do, if you do the things we suggest and get out of mm -hmm. debt, the I have never had one person that we've taught to do this say they wish they were back the way they were, that they yeah. miss everything they had. Yeah, not I one never. person. Not one person. No. So Okay, so, so one of the first tips we're doing is... Well, what I would wanted to do was one time I went to the grocery store to show you how to put this in practical practice. I went to the grocery store. I got there, and I had 20 things on my list about, on my grocery list, and I had $7 with me and no credit card. So I had to figure out... What would go, what I could use, what I could buy, what I couldn't real fast because, uh, you know, $7 for 20 items just even back then didn't get it. So here's some of the things. What I'm going to tell you, let's pretend like this is a typical shopping list. And I'll show you how I was able to weed out some things that you can get by with. You don't have to go buy these things. These are wants, not needs. And the first one is weed killer, which <laughs> I know is really okay, a dumb thing to start it off, but it's... But the thing, oh, and another thing I want to say, a lot of things aren't politically correct, aren't environmentally friendly, aren't all these other things are horrible, maybe unhealthy. I was in survival mode. I had two children, I had $10, and I had to feed them on that for two to three weeks. And I didn't care if what I had to buy for food was environmentally friendly or politically correct. Yep. You haven't, if you worry about that to too extreme, you haven't been in dire straits yet. So you got to get in this mindset. So weed killer. I looked at that and I thought, what can I do instead of weed killer? Well, two options. I had vinegar already at home. So I could cut out the weed killer because I could use a weed killer sprayed on my weeds 
Or another thing that I usually do most of the time, I hand pulled the weeds. I mean, what a concept. I, it was extra work. I was working 70 hours a week, so it wasn't easy. But I pulled what I could, and so I got rid of weed killer. Lotion. I had lotion on my list. Okay. You'd think you couldn't, especially in Colorado, do without lotion. But I got to thinking, I have baby oil at home, you know? So I would just use the baby oil until I got enough money where I could buy the lotion in a couple of weeks or whatever. Now, if you break out by using baby oil and you break out in hives and, you know, you have this horrible reaction, well, the lotion idea maybe won't work for you. You may have to buy lotion, you know? I'm saying this is for normal people, and if you can get by with it, don't buy the lotion, and I could get by without buying the lotion. So um, let me interrupt here just to make sure. Please give me a thumbs up um, if you can still hear us and if we're still clear. We've tweaked our feeds to make sure everything's coming in, so I'd really appreciate if you'd let me know if we're still coming in clear because I think we are, but we can't see your end. So let me know on that. Back to the lotion. Here's some of the things that you can do instead of lotion. Down in the comments on um, YouTube, I put a link to our homemade lotion bars. And you're going to say, well, I don't want to make homemade lotion bars. But here's the thing. It's super simple. All you need to do is if you don't want to make the lotion bars, you can just use olive oil or avocado oil, shortening. Um, you can use um, any type of cooking oil that you're not allergic to, of course, but any type of cooking oil you could you could use as a lotion. And you could even go so far as to make our lotion bars, um, the link is in the description on YouTube, but you could make those, those lotion bars, if you don't have any beeswax, do you have a beeswax candle you could melt? Um, you know, well, look at do what you, you have, have around the house and see how can exactly. I make this work. Yeah, how, how can you do, use this? Um, put chapstick on your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, we got all these, uh, we're in Colorado, so everybody has, gives away chapstick here. But you can, um, oh good, thank you guys for letting us know that you can hear us. Um, we, here in Colorado, it seems like everybody gives away chapstick because it's just so incredibly dry. Spread some chapstick on your hands. Give it or to your to kids. Remove to Kansas and you won't have to use that. No. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't go to, this is not that extreme. <laughs> Just kidding. But, you know, think outside the box of what you can yeah, do. Yeah, look so, around and see how I, can I get by without buying this yeah. item. Well, here's a perfect example. I had scotch tape on the list. Okay, I couldn't buy. I read, you know, the scotch clear mm -hmm. scotch tape. So I got to think of what could I use in place of that. I had did have masking tape. I had a glue stick. All of those things would have worked perfect in place of the scotch tape. So start, if you, instead of just automatically writing it on your list, think, how can I, you know, do something mm -hmm. different? Um, dishwashing detergent. Okay, I couldn't buy, of course, I didn't have a dishwasher at that time. But, you know, if you don't have that, guess what? You can hand wash dishes. I know you're going to love that one, but it does work. You, and even in extreme one time, I didn't have dishwashing detergent regular or dishwasher. I had nothing really. I tried laundry soap, but I was getting low on that. And so what I did was I washed like I was doing really hot water with a rag. Then I sterilized them with boiling water. I didn't have either once, but I made, no, nah, that doesn't mean I did that every day, every week, all the time. I did it until I had enough money to get what I needed on my list. Does that make yep. sense? Mm -hmm. And if you need an a easy dishwasher recipe, uh, yes, I know we say wash, we're from Kansas, got to qualify that, but go to our YouTube channel and I put the link on there for our two ingredient dishwasher liquid because, you know, you can do things like putting lemon Kool-Aid in your dishwasher and that sounds crazy. But it actually works. It's the citric. It yeah, it's the citric acid that will clean. So you can do things like that also. Yeah, just look around at things. For oh, batteries. I had on my list batteries for I forget what it was for the remote for the phone or something. I, it wasn't the phone, but it was something. And I thought, okay, how can you get by without batteries? Because I couldn't substitute a whole lot of anything. Well, I got to think, and the kids had toys that had batteries in them. And I was looking, so I got I was to an work. abused child. <laughs> she took the batteries took out of my toys. Out of toys. <laughs> but, you know, you can, what I could do is, let's say you have a remote with batteries in it and you need the batteries and stuff. 
Go use the batteries in your hand of whatever thing you're doing. And then when you're done with it, put them back in the remote. I was switching my batteries. It took time. It took effort. But I couldn't pay for batteries at that time. And it worked. And I did, like I said, I didn't do it forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it just yeah. worked for a while. So, you know, to look around and think, how can I do this without spending the money? Mm -hmm. And you know another thing. I, I'm going to pop in real quick here and stop on the list. I have grandkids and I've showed them how to figure something out that wasn't working or that they need to make do with, their little chests puff up. They feel so good about themselves. And I think part of the lack of confidence in people nowadays, you know, they say young girls don't have confidence anymore. And, young, you know, nobody has any confidence. Nobody's bothering to teach their kids how to figure things out. Look and see, how can I do this? You'll feel so good about yourself that you figured out something without just yeah. spending the money or something like that, you know, yeah. to fix it and do Wayne, it. <laughs> Wayne on YouTube says, my wife thinks of me as the dishwasher and the sink filler. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, yeah. And let's see, uh, I missed the name, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes. That's yeah, I always say that to the kids, yeah. 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 That's the truth. And, you know, somebody said interchange light bulbs and batteries. Yeah, you know, uh, can you go without a light bulb? Yeah, well, the light bulb, I got the yeah. light bulb on our list here because so, I would move light bulbs from room to room. Yeah. You know, that's what you do. You have to. Uh, Antifreeze. Now, you couldn't, uh, for the car, I needed some of that. I couldn't substitute anything, but I went to the recycling center, and they had it for free. Oh, we need to do a whole thing we'll on do, recycling We won't center. touch on that too much because <laughs> you won't believe what I found at the yeah. recycling center. For I spend nothing on oil and stuff like that. Paint. Because we paint, get it all free. Paint, paint clean, 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 oil. Pro the few cleaning products I use. Cleaning products. Yeah. yeah. We, we get it all free. Yeah, I don't know that we've paid for cleaning products mm -hmm. or paint. Hardly. Well, I paid a little bit of paint on this house, but uh, yeah. yeah. All we because we... Mom found the recycling center at our place, put up on shelves, free for you to take, good products that people turned in. Mm -hmm. All kinds of stuff. She goes almost like once a week or something if she's doing a project and she's like collecting paint colors like she was wanting to paint her house gray. So she went every week for a couple of weeks, found all the paint she needed, mixed them together, make sure all the latexes go together, don't mix latex and oil, but... She got them all together, and she was able to paint her kitchen for free. Oh, I got can gallons and gallons of deck. Yep. Um, what is it? Stuff to put on your deck. Deck paint. stain. Deck stain is yeah. what I'm thinking of. You know, I got a ton of that for free and things like that. So, um, things like baby powder. You know, I love baby powder. Sometimes it's so humid in Kansas, you have to put a little powder on just for the irritation type of thing. Well, I didn't, couldn't buy baby powder. So, I went and used cornstarch instead. It works mm -hmm. beautifully, you know. Arrowroot no also works. Yeah. Just if you have an avid around. I was going to say, arrowroot around. I mean, seriously. Arrowroot. But it works if you have an <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, oh, like Bacatricin ointment. I didn't have any, you know, Bacatricin ointment. I crossed that off the list because I did have peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. So you can use that. Neosporin for, is what it's called now. Yeah. That's the name brand. Yeah. But, yeah. So, you know, I use prox. Now here on, um, I had baggies listed, you know, sandwich bags. So what I did was I got to thinking, okay, I do have wax paper, I do have plastic wrap, I do have foil at home still, so I could use all of those to wrap the sandwiches in, to wrap the, that's all we ever used, but there, when I was young, we didn't even have baggies, mm -hmm. you know, so that's what we used, but also, if you don't even have that, you can take the uh, wax paper stuff out of the cereal box, and use that. And another thing, what when I went to school, I'm dating myself, aren't I? Oh, <laughs> but anyway, what we would use, we didn't use baggies, so my mom would save all of our bread wrappers, the plastic bags from our bread, our hot dog buns, hamburger buns, and that's what we would use. Another thing, well, this might be too much information, but another th thing these are good for, I saw special bags you can buy to pick up your dog poop when you take them on a walk. I mean, mm -hmm. these things were expensive. I know, I'm sorry. But this is, you got to get real on this stuff. I know. And I thought, I couldn't believe what people were buying. Save your plastic, Walmart I mean, socks. Walmart or socks, socks, or your bread bags, you know, mm -hmm. take those along and, and do those. Your bread so. bags, your vegetable bags, mm -hmm. put all those. I showed um, two days ago how we put them in a big canister with a lid and we just shove them all in there. Use that. My daughter will tie on the handle of our leash for the dog a um, 
bag from Walmart or a bread bag when we go take the dog for a walk. So yeah, don't yeah. buy special poop bags. Sometimes on, even you know? we didn't even have latex gloves. So what you would do if you're picking up a gooey mess of some sort, greasy mm -hmm. or something, you could stick your hand in one of those bags and pick it up and not use latex gloves even. Mm -hmm. And we got we get all you we throw away so much stuff like yeah. that. You know, they want to recycle and save the environment. I don't recycle. I have mm -hmm. nothing to recycle because I use everything that I buy, you know, many times, really. So Yeah, uh, and what you do okay, just to back up just slightly. So my kids have poop duty in the backyard when it's not summer and we just mow it and fling it all over. We love right. this subject, don't we? <laughs> but my kids will get a Walmart sack, put their hand inside the Walmart sack, pick it up, and turn it inside out. Or they'll have one Walmart sack over their hand and holding another one. They're where really they're scared of it. <laughs> so, well, my kids are germaphobes, but I, make, I don't know how they get germaphobes, but I make them do it anyway. So, you know, you can do that without buying special gloves. Yeah, it makes, so, oh, I needed baking soda. Now, baking soda is pretty much essential, especially for cooking and that type of thing. And it's not very expensive, but 30 cents back then, mm -hmm. I, you know, I couldn't even afford the 30 some odd cents or whatever, yeah. 40 cents, whatever it is. And so what I did was... I had to go for a week or two without using, baking anything that called for baking soda. Mm -hmm. Now, it was a little bit of a challenge, but there's lots of foods you can make without <laughs> using baking soda. You know, really, you can yeah. get by with it for a couple of weeks if you had to. So that's how you think of things. Instead of thinking, well, i got to go buy baking soda right now because I'm out of it, mm -hmm. start thinking, what can I do? until I can get the baking yeah. soda type thing. Um, okay, we're going to take a break just for a second here, and I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Um, Rowena said, how do you get out of credit card debt when you're a senior and you have a lot of medical bills? You have to get extreme. Um, I don't, this is well, a very hard question to answer. Well, let's clarify first. There will be some cases. This is true, yeah. And I had a financial advisor once tell me this. Tara took me to him because she was wanting to see what he'd say about my finances, you know, and because and they, they always can find places where you can uh -huh. save. And she took me to him to see what he could say about my, and he he couldn't find one penny where I could save. He said what she needs is to bring more money in, yeah. you know. And this is one of those cases, I think. Yeah, probably. There are cases. Do as carefully as you can and mm -hmm. then. Yeah, I mean, you may have to claim bankruptcy. There are, will be some people who have fifty or $100,000 worth medical of debt. Medical debts are not what we're talking about. We're not about. talking about medical debts. We're talking about stupidity debts, like eating out and putting it on your credit card, buying cars and, and getting a loan Drinking for them. Drinking nothing but pop and That's juices. the kind of debt we're talking about. And so, but... If you really want to get out, you have to get extreme in your saving. You Even a senior citizen, you need to get extreme. If you have new cars, get rid of them and get cars without payments. If you have a big house, sell your house and get a smaller house. Um, you know, you have to really get extreme in your saving money. And one of the best tips ever um, is start with your smallest debt and get it paid off. Pay off your smallest debt first, mm -hmm. if it's credit card, whatever. Pay that one off. Then take the same money that you would have been spending on that credit card and put it on the next one or your medical bill, whatever. Um, then when that one's paid off, the next smallest one is paid off, then move to the next one and take both of the first two that paid off those payments and put it on the third one. Eventually, it will snowball and you'll get everything paid off. Medical bills, talk to, talk to them. the hospital or doctor's office. A lot of times they will... Sorry, I don't know what happened here. A lot of times, if you come in and say, I have $5,000 and I have $25,000 in medical bills, will you take this $5,000 cash and let me pay it off right now? A lot of times, you'd be surprised, they will take ask. it. Ask. A don't lot of times, they'll take it. Yeah. Ask on yeah. these things. And, you know, if you're really in dire straits, see if you uh, see if you qualify for Medicaid. You know, there is nothing wrong with taking those services if you are having extreme problems. Those are for the extremes. Yeah. And we agree yeah. to take them. We're talking about people that are perfectly healthy, have no medical, natural disaster debt, and can go out and get a job, mm -hmm. 
This yeah. is what we're aiming for, but when some of these you can't. But if you're a senior citizen now, I was just talking to a lady today, and she was talking about a friend, and she said we're, her husband was worried about this friend not having enough, enough, enough money, but she said she pays $60 every six weeks to have her hair done alone, you know, among other things, beauty stuff that she buys and stuff. So cut, watch what you're spending on, you know, and that type. But I think that's the best advice is to go ask them. We're afraid to ask, and you need to just go ask. So. Yeah, people don't ask. And, um, shoot, Mom just said something. Oh, Denise says she has her first cookbook, Not Just Beans. Oh, wow, that was thank like, you. <laughs> we wrote Not Just Beans about, let's see, when did it go almost, out of print? Almost 20 years ago. Not yeah, 18, 18, 18, years, 18 ago, years ago. It went out of print 16 or 17 years ago. It went out of print. So that, thank you. That's a thankful <laughs> reader. We appreciate it. Um, let's see. Where can you, uh, Sherry asks, where can you find our tips for our other shows? Go to YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Living on a Dime. Go to Facebook. Our Facebook is Living on a Dime. Or go to our website, livingonadime.com. We have both of those. Um, someone said, do you have any last tip, minute tips on getting married? Don't. Oh, wait. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> That's the cheapest way to go. Huh? <laughs> um, well, it depends on what you're wanting to save on. I mean, if you're wanting to save on your, on your um, actual wedding, Make everything yourself. Don't invite everybody and their um, dog to your wedding. I mean, you don't need your great uncle's fourth cousin removed. Well, we just and had a reader comment. She did uh, catering, catering for all mm -hmm. kinds of act things. And, you know, when we did Tara's wedding and on my wedding, we had the basics. We had cake, punch, coffee. Yep. Few finger sandwiches and like a bowls of nuts and that we didn't have a whole lot of anything and some chips and stuff, and we had a caterer just recently say, forty years she's catered and they ha she's done sit down dinners, huge meals, and she said the she they found out the thing people like the most is the simple stuff. They said they'll put out a whole buffet of gorgeous food and the chips and the dip are always the first to run out. Yeah, and so. Don't think you have to have a big occasion, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't go into debt for a wedding. It just isn't. Well, and I just had my chiropractor tell me that um, I've gotten to be good friends with her. <laughs> <laughs> tell me that she went to a wedding and the lady spent $250 a person for just food and that she was expected to take a gift that equaled that amount. I about fell off the table. I can just imagine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there is no way. And you don't have to have a sit-down dinner, people. I I didn't even know this was a thing until people started talking to me about it. Everyone has sit-down dinners now for your weddings. Don't have cake, punch, mints, and maybe some nice little fancy sandwiches that you can make at home, you know, cucumber-type sandwiches type thing. But you don't have to have well, a complete to show, dinner. To show you, too, we worry about what other people think. We always do. At Tara's wedding, we had almost everybody commented at that wedding because we had finger foods that people could just carry and stand and visit with each other. And we got more comments back saying that was the best wedding they'd ever mm -hmm. been to because they got to visit with everybody and it was warm and comfortable and I think it was the fact that they were relaxed. They didn't mm -hmm. have the stiff formal dinner yeah. and they could just visit and feel at home. And that's another thing. You don't have to invite every business mm -hmm. acquaintance, every, any, you know, Joe Blow mm -hmm. to come just to get these wedding gifts and stuff. You could, it works both ways mm -hmm. with the people coming and, you know, you, you and your wedding. Yeah. And so don't feel like, don't, we do this stuff because we worry about what other people going to think. And everybody yeah. loved your wedding. They yeah. really did. They thought yeah. it was one of the best. That's one thing. If you can get over what people think about you, you That's will save tons of thing. money. Because, frankly, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. If you get over the Joneses, you know, staying up with it, keeping up with the Joneses attitude, if you can get rid of that, your whole life will be just you like know, a breeze. When we, when we first moved to this house, our neighbors were all laughing at Mike and I because we were dumpster diving when they were building all the houses around us. And we would go get wood and free sod and all this stuff. And all my neighbors were laughing. And now all my neighbors are not dumpster diving because <laughs> they see what great things you can get. So don't worry about what people think. Mm -mm. So, yeah. okay, next on the list. All right, let's see. We had, oh, bath wash. 
you know, sometimes we have so many toiletries. Each person has a different type of bath wash in the family. And you can use just a plain old bar of soap. If you don't have the money to buy, spend, don't even go in the soap. She's making soap now like... That's I've really insane. gotten in. Like an insane person. Yeah. So I hate even talking about My soap. great, great, great grandchildren are never going to have to buy soap. We've got already <laughs> enough stockpiles for that long. <laughs> so, but anyway, get one bar of soap. And you say, well, I have a baby. So he needs to have special... You know, if you buy a bar of ivory soap, there's hardly a person in the world, you know, that can't use that. And do you know how much money you would save? And I know it'll get your shower, Gookie. Well, just... For a few weeks, a couple of months, a year, however it takes you to get out of debt, wash the shower then, you know, oh, and get it. Here's a tip for you on the shower thing, though. I had one reader tell me she was a professional cleaner, and she said use white bars of soap instead of the green or the yellowish-orange bars of soap because they leave less soap scum. So there's a tip for yeah. you. Yeah. Plus, my bathroom's white, so it wouldn't show up as much. I exactly. could leave it on there, there longer. You go. <laughs> um, then, oh, here's a couple of things like uh, I needed carpet deodorizer. I had a spot on my carpet that was smelling so bad, and you have all the fancy carpet uh, deodorizers. A lot of stuff like this you really don't need to buy. I just took baby baking soda and sprinkled it on there, left it for a few days, vacuumed it off, and it was just fine. So, you know, I already had the baking soda. This was another time when I didn't have to buy baking soda. And so it's stuff like that. Baby items. I don't know. We could almost do a whole thing on baby items. Yeah, we could do a whole show uh, on that. Because you don't need all the bells and whistles. I, you know, uh, Excuse me just a minute. Yes, to finish up on the soap, Karen, go to livingonadime.com. I have my um, recipe and my instructions, and there's a video on how to make lye soap, L-Y-E, soap. We have a YouTube video and on a, Living on a Dime, we have how to make lye soap. So, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to get that in before we change subjects. So. Well, you know, we ha on our on our website, we have a lot of homemade mm -hmm. items like that. All kinds of stuff, you know, yeah. if you guys need it for anything. So, yeah. But on the baby stuff, you know, they have fancy burp cloths that they buy now for the baby and things like that. When Tara's second baby was born, she had a stomach problem. She was just throwing up all the time. The birth burp cloths, went out the door, we were using towels, we yeah. were using hand towels. You can use all that stuff for the babies if you need to. Uh, a lot of people buy these expensive, fancy, <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh when you hear what I did, but they buy these expensive, fancy gyms and stuff for the babies to lay under and look at the stuff, and you even had one for yours, so it's mm -hmm. not like we're against it, but they they were given one, I think, a gift, or you got it at a garage sale or something. Yeah. I didn't, I couldn't buy one for my grandkids when they came over to visit. So I set two chairs, and I put a um, broom handle across, and I tied things from my kitchen door, drawer along the broom handle, and had them... <laughs> I'm sorry, I knew you would laugh at me. And I was I, there, I saw what you did to my children. <laughs> and so they love laying and looking at all the little gidget gadgets that I tied on. I, I put a colorful red ribbon, just different odds and ends that they could lay and look at. So you don't need that. You don't need a changing table. I never had a changing table. You don't need one. Mm -hmm. I changed them on the floor or on the, you know, it wasn't easy and fun, but... And a baby stuff, I could just go on and yep. on and on for all kinds of stuff, you know, that you yeah. can save for baby things. Um, other things, oh dear, we're going to really get in trouble with this one. Uh-oh, which one? Clorox wipes. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, I don't hate Clorox wipes I, or any kind of wipes. You know, I don't have a problem with it. Well, yes, I do have a problem. And just for the record, we have that recipe also. Yeah, we do have a Clorox wipes. Clorox wipes. So look for the Clorox wipes do, recipe. I? I forgot about that one. <laughs> Here, but, I'll put it up there. <laughs> so put it up there. As Mom's telling you not to, tell use them. not to use them, we'll tell you how to make them. Is yeah. what we're doing. But, um, you know, it took takes me five seconds to take my rag and squirt whatever cleaner I'm using and then wipe it down. So I've never totally figured out the whole concept of the Clorox wipe being that much faster because I keep my rag that I clean with and my <laughs> laundry thing in as much space as what a Clorox wipe tube would pl be placed. Mm -hmm. And I just grab, grab and spray, and I just wipe. Another thing, I, I don't like the wipes as much. Now, that doesn't mean I've never used them. I've used them in a couple of places, mm -hmm. you know, and but very rarely. I think I had one can that lasted me for like four years. But anyway... 
they leave a residue on stuff. I like my bathroom to shine. It looks cleaner to me and fre mm -hmm. fresher or yeah. something. And wipes leave a residue. I haven't used any yet that don't leave some kind of a residue. And even I can wipe them off, you know, but it's still. Yeah. So that's my, but you can get by. What I'm saying is you don't have to have Clorox wipe. Yeah. You can use a rag, you know, with clean. We cut up t-shirts. Even for the babies. Yeah. I didn't, I never used baby wipes for my kids. Never used a baby wipe. What I did was I would, oh, we're going that gory detail again, aren't That's we? That's all right. I'm sorry. Well, we've done dog poop. After the toilet. Well going, <laughs> after the toilet paper after folding the, toilet the other day, we just totally. It's all out. If you missed that video, we explained how to save on toilet paper. And how to use it. Fold it into neat little squares instead, instead of wadding it. Instead of wadding There's an and arc to wipe it. And your hands won't get dirty. <laughs> We don't we don't keep anything back here, guys. But I would take toilet so get a toilet paper. When I had babies, you don't have to have baby wipes. I would take toilet paper and just wipe off their little buns, you know, toss it in the toilet. Then I would take a warm wash rag, because most of it was cleaned off, and then just gently wipe, and then that wash rag would go in with the diaper pail, you know, type of thing. So you don't even need baby wipes. Everybody panics, they you know, about oh what am I gonna do? I don't have baby wipes. We didn't even have baby wipes until your babies were born. Uh -huh. You know, there was yeah. no such a thing. So yeah. you can do some, That this goes back to think about how can I do this without buying something yeah. and saving a little bit of money. Because using a little bit of folded toilet paper <laughs> was cheaper than, you know, buying the baby wipes. And I had it on hand, you know, and yeah. that type of thing. <laughs> I'm trying to, as we're talking, in case you're wondering, I'm trying to answer questions in the comments and um, that kind of thing as we're going. If you're on Facebook, I'm answering under Mike because <laughs> we're on his computer, so that's that's me. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's why you, you, you under Mike, you don't look like Mike. Do you? I don't look like Mike. Yeah. And Linda said... Um, Rubbing alcohol. I love rubbing alcohol. Oh, I do too. That's all I, well, I, that's not all I clean Half the with, time but. I use it in my bathroom faucets because it wipes really mm -hmm. fast and it clears And on the up. windows, it, it really shines your shines mirrors it. and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So rubbing alcohol, just put some in a wa in a bottle with some water and spray it on there. And we're not mm -hmm. hitting on a lot of those cleaning tips because we did some the other day and we're going to probably have to do yeah. a whole thing on these cleaning type um, things. You know what? Mom's going to be here for another two days. So put in the comments if there's something specific you want to hear about before Mom leaves in two or three days. When are you leaving? Wednesday. Okay, she's leaving. So we have three days left. And Wednesday. if... Huh? Monday and Tuesday. Oh, two days left. Sorry. Oh, that shortens it even more. Um, if there's something specific, do you want cleaning products? Do you want laundry? Do you want groceries? Do you want kids stuff? Kids stuff. Do you want her story on how she lived on five hundred dollars a month? Um, things that she can do while we're here. So let us know in the comments if there's something like that that you want to specifically hear before she leaves. Um, so okay, next okay, one. Okay, next one. I need a deodorant. Okay. Now everybody's going to say you can't do without deodorant. You know, it's just a no brainer. I you have to have deodorant, but. I used uh, baking soda once. I love baking soda. You can't tell. I don't use it. Crazy person would use it, but I do like it. I used baking soda. It worked just as good as my deodorant, you know, and I didn't use it, like I said, once again forever, but you can use baking soda. Another thing, most people don't realize, if you wash your armpits, when we say we're going to cover everything, we do cover everything. When you wash your armpits with <laughs> soap and water, that pretty much can take care. I mean, most people... Some people have a real problem, but an average person, you can get by through the day, even if you have to stop halfway through the day and rewash them. You know, you can't. That's, to me, an extreme. I never had to do quite that extreme, but if you had to do it, you could do it. And what I'm, I know this sounds really weird, some of this stuff, but I'm trying to shake you up and have you start thinking, what can I do, you know, to make it, make it work? Um... Let's see what well, we got. Dryer, she oh, dryer sheets and fabric softeners. We'll we'll probably cover those in the cleaning supplies and stuff. But I just want to say here, you don't have to use dryer sheets or fabric shop softener. No. You no. know, I I love using fabric softener. I use it by the gallons if I could. I love it so much. No. But there was a point in my life when I was trying to save every penny, and I didn't. Buy fabric softener because you just you know I had to give it up some things you just have to give up um, oh trash bag leaf bags is that what they're called that you put the leaves in <laughs> you can tell I never yeah. used any so I don't know 
I see more people with these huge bags of leaves sitting everywhere. I've never, well, you bought me some one time because you guys were doing some yard work. So you can tell who's the extreme frugal one here. But <laughs> I've got to rub that in. But you don't have to buy things for, like, leaf bags. Take a corner if you're raking. First of all, just run over the leaves with a lawnmower. And it'll, won't that mulch your the garden? It'll decompose. It'll yeah. mulch them up. You don't have to pick up You the don't leaves. have to rake and pick them up. You can just run them over with a lawnmower. Uh, although at one point I didn't have the lawnmower to run them over with. So if you rake them, just find a corner in the yard and rake them all over there and let them decompose. I, though, personally, I put them in my trash barrel because I don't have that much trash. So I have plenty of room. I just put hands full every once in a while. Oh, you're just going to, I shouldn't tell this. Then I take, you'll just die. She I don't think Tara knows I do this. My front yard blows in Kansas. The wind blows really hard. So I, don't know where you're going with this. I scoop my leaves into boxes and shake them out on my front yard. And within 20, 30 minutes, the leaves are all gone. There you go. <laughs> well, it works. Let so nature I'm, do the work for you. <laughs> I'm being environmentally in case you're, friendly, aren't I? <laughs> in case you're wondering, in the backyard she has a fence, so they won't blow in the They backyard, won't blow in the black, so I have to pull them to the front yard. There's no fence. Okay, so that's we've only got 10 minutes left here, so I'm going to answer a couple of questions real quick. Um, Tammy wanted to know what's a good sunburn re remedy. Good old aloe, but here's the trick. Get the aloe with the laticane in it that is aloe with pain relief. It's the pain relief that helps you with pain. <laughs> so you can sit again, but get aloe. Aloe is great. I mean, we slather it on. And the other trick is to continually put it on. My son came back from camp. He looked like a lobster. As a matter of fact, he was so bad, I thought we were going to have to take him to the hospital because he was so dehydrated and so sunburned. He looked horrible. I mean, I, I just cannot express how bad he got sunburned. And so what I did was literally every 15 to 30 minutes, I would go back in and spread the aloe back on again. Another thing is, is before you put the aloe on, sit in a cool water bathtub and that will help start calming it down quicker. Don't put ice on it. Don't put ice on it. A cool, as cool as they can stand bath water. So get the sunburn relief, sunburn with, wait a minute, the aloe sunburn, you know, stuff that you can buy at the store with pain relief though. And you can just use an aloe plant, but it's the pain relief that really, really helps. Um, and Tiffany says that helps with bug bites too. It does. The aloe with pain relief helps with bug bites. It stops the itching and that Did kind of thing. Did we use men's aftershave one time? Mm -hmm. aftershave, aftershave has aftershave. worked. Um, let's see. Christina and somebody else used um, apple cider vinegar. I haven't tried that one. So I don't know if that helps no. or not. I don't know um, the plant works great. Um, the men's aftershave, you didn't blister up. After you used it, you yeah. turned brown. I don't blister with aloe though. We've never blistered, but the trick is to put it on more than once. You got to put it on several consistent times. With put it. consistent. Um, several people said calamine lotion. So um, it, it's looking like everybody is wanting to hear mom's story about how she lived on five hundred dollars a month. So if you agree with that, please give me a thumbs up so we can know, and we'll maybe schedule that for tomorrow. Aren't you excited? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, mom's the planner. And I'm not. <laughs> so, so five minutes before we come on air, she says, um, what are we doing? I'm like, I don't know. Let's pick a page out of the book. <laughs> so anyway, um, let's see. Any, What can you use for chigger bites? The aloe with pain relief works for that. Calamine, Calamine lotion, lotion works, works for, for that. Chigger bites. Um, let's see. Any other questions? We've got about seven minutes left. As soon as we're done here, please head over to the Homestead Network. We have a huge lineup today, um, several hours worth of great YouTubers, um, great videos on how to do things. The next one up is Linda's Pantry. She has some great ideas on canning. I don't like to can. Mom and I dehydrate. She's your person to go to, so go check out Linda's Pantry next. Um, and please keep doing, um, or please keep checking out the Homestead Network because we're going to have lots of people added on there. Um, 
Let's see, any other questions? I don't see any other questions at the moment. So do you have any last tips while we finish up here? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, mouthwash. I couldn't afford mouthwash, but you can take half peroxide and half water, you know, for a mouthwash. And it whitens your teeth, too. And it whitens your teeth. The light bulbs, we already mentioned that, that I would switch them out from where I need it, from place to place. Oh, one, one of the readers gave us an idea. And we'll do school clothes probably on another whole thing. But this is just to give you an idea on clothes. She needed school uniforms. Well, she didn't have the money to buy them. And the kids had outgrown them in the sleeves and in the pants. So what she did was she cut off the sleeves, cut off the pants. You can buy hem tape. You don't even have to sew. You can buy fusible hem tape and roll up the hems. Because the first couple of months of school was hot. So they wore those old um, outfits with just having them cut off like that. So that's mm -hmm. another thing. Um, let's see, what else did we have? Toothpaste, if you don't have toothpaste, I couldn't buy toothpaste and you know, it wasn't that expensive, but I just couldn't afford it. You can use baking soda or salt in place of toothpaste. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, if you're ever stranded without a toothbrush, and this is what they use for many, many years, you can wrap a rag, if you don't have a toothbrush, a rag around your finger, and rub it on your teeth. Mm -hmm. And like I say, no dentist holler at me because this isn't a permanent this forever. This is an everyday thing. No. This is an emergency. This, I had to wait two weeks to get grocery or get more money so I could buy this stuff. And so that's the type of thing you can use. Um, Tammy asked, what color of wedding dress would you wear to celebrate your 25th anniversary? I say any color you choose if you've made it oh, that yeah. long. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and I have been almost 22 and I say, if you haven't killed them by now, Whatever color you want to wear. If you want to wear purple, wear purple. <laughs> but you know that really goes. I, I'm finding out now, even for your, your first uh, for your first wedding. I guess you're married 25 <laughs> years, but you can wear almost anything you want now. Really, and get yeah, by with it you if can. you want to. Really, so. it's your celebration. Yeah, it's, it's yeah celebrate. enjoy it. You know, if your favorite yeah. color is pink, wear pink. You know, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, let's see. We've got four minutes left. Um, so we were asked, what kind of pet-friendly um, bug killer do you use? I use Diatinaceous Earth. And um, Tiffany on YouTube put it in there. I'm not sure how to spell it, but it's somewhere. She may have spelled it wrong, too, but it's like D-I-A-T-O-M-A-C-I-O-U-S is how she spelled it. I'm not sure if that's right. It's Diatinaceous Earth. And what it is, is it's a powder that's ground up fossils, and when bugs walk across it, it kills, or it scratches the exoskeleton on their, exoskeleton I guess, I don't know, <laughs> but anyway, it scratches their outside and then they um, dry up and dehydrate, but it's extremely safe for um, people and pets, and I just bought a 10 pound bag on Amazon, I think. I think it was $20 and it's lasted me five, no, three years and I haven't even used a quarter of it and I mean I dumped it everywhere, every corner, every crevice of our house, in our basement, I just, I put a good layer down in our basement corners and crevices and everything. So diatinaceous earth. Um, let's see, vinegar, okay, I think... That's about it. One more tip. We got three minutes, Mom. Oh, three minutes for one more tip. Three minutes for one tip. Can we do one tip? One tip. Uh, in conclusion, let's see. Uh, well, we didn't cover things like nail polish and paper plates and, you know, a lot of little things. Like, those things should just automatically go by the wayside. And you can do things like, if you don't have the money to buy blush and lipstick, buy one color and of lipstick and put it on your lips and use it on your cheeks. Yes. Then yes. you can get you a dollar tube at the Dollar Tree, but you can use it as both lipstick and blush. Yes, and you know what? You may not like this as well, but at the thrift store, I have found huge bags of Mary Kay makeup stuff, mm -hmm. and it's sealed in sealed packages of mm -hmm. samples and stuff yeah. for 45 mm -hmm. cents, a huge yeah. bag. Yeah, so. she's always coming on with all these huge samples. So look at your thrift stores for unopened things of makeup and that kind of thing. Um, we are, my book please, go to livingonadime.com, click on the store at the top, you can find our books. 
Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are trying to get it built up, and we need some encouragement, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> so please subscribe, and um, go to our website, livingonadime.com. We've got thousands, literally like 1,500 to 2,000 articles on our website on how to save money and recipes. We have a ton of things. So right now we're ending. Go check out Linda's Pantry. She's great. You're going to love her. And we hope you have a great Sunday. Mm -hmm. See you guys Bye -bye. next week. <laughs>